How do you stand out on social media, trigger people's emotions, and maximize a moment to the point that it becomes memorable? Today, we're gonna do a PR masterclass because a career isn't just about going viral, it's about creating moments that you tie together over time. But we're gonna start with media manipulation in the highest degree with a breakdown from somebody who's a legitimate insider from one of the best organizations who've done that over and over again. This is The Sauce. I'm Brian Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. All right, in today's episode, we're doing a PR masterclass where we're going to give y'all The Sauce, break down some true elements and campaigns that we've navigated, help create some massive moments but we got to get to some moment makers. I got a clip for you. Jacory. you haven't seen this clip. He hasn't I seen this clip. I have not seen this clip. And we, we have <laughs> the, the unpacking, the revealing of the methods that TMZ has used directly from an insider. And I think the way he's talking about exactly the tactics they do, it's literally a workshop, basically. I call it a glorified workshop that y'all need to listen to this and take this for yourself. It's going to change how you see this entire industry and how you can do it for yourself. Check this out. Joe Rogan, there's enough. It's just such a vast range of conversations. Makes you, gives you more tools in your intellectual tool belt. And I wouldn't even say that. It just kind of like, because I, I don't agree with everything that's said on the podcast, you know? Like her word. Well, yeah, I mean. Wait. You do agree with me. I didn't say that. Well, see, see, look at what you did. This is the way, this is, wait, this is why you got to be careful. Cause like, you're, you're you're fucking, you know what? This, this, this is, this is is TMZ level bullshit. This is, this is where, yeah, well, you think I learned it. This is where you got to be, this is where you got to be careful. This is where you got to be careful. Cause I could make that, I could, that, I could make that clip look a crazy way. I, in my head, that's what, I can make that clip look crazy. Like, no, you can't make it look that crazy. Yes, I can. On Joe Rogan, like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, like, Word, which is a joke. This is where the master class begins. <laughs> yes, I can. On Joe Rogan, like I'm like I'm like oh, like the word, which is a joke. And you went, well. Like, no, I mean, well, you said you, said you uh, don't agree with everything. I don't agree with everything. And that's the, obviously that. Word, and you, I was you like, well, like I, no, I, obviously I, I don't agree with that. that. No, yeah. obviously I don't agree with. You're trying to. Well, this is what we're gonna do. What were your thoughts? Well, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna clip this. And and try to ruin and it. And then I'm gonna put it out there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this whole thing in kayfabe. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do <laughs> wrestling terms. I'm gonna do this whole thing. I'm gonna clip this piece of this of this interview. And I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it on Twitter. All right, this is a lot longer in terms of clips that we usually play, but uh, trust me, y'all need to hear every part of this. All the context matters, and we'll comment in between. But like, I, I really want y'all to hear like how he workshops this before we get into the full episode. It's, it's gonna you, you're gonna like. It. I'm gonna say. Bootleg Kev hesitates to answer whether or not I'm telling I'm, teach, I'm teaching everybody right now how to cook a headline. Yo, what's the point, point and shoot? Here you go. I'm teaching everybody right now how to cook a headline. This is how you cook a headline. When you're writing a headline, there are three things you need. Number one, conflict. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, black iPhone on desk, no conflict. Mm. Right? How do you inject conflict into that headline about the black iPhone on the desk? How? Device made by child slave labor in China mm. left on desk. Now that was sick, by the way. That was sick. Yeah. <laughs> that was sick. You did that. You have something mm. that is. It'll peak. It, you, you'll be like, oh, oh, what is this device that was made by child? Let me slave see what labor? it is. Let me click what, on this. What is this? What? Why do we need children to make this device? What's the thing? What it is? That's the way you do that headline. One headline is I'm not gonna. I don't care about an iPhone being on the desk, but something that kids slaves made. I care about that. Click on the headline. Okay. Oh, it's an iPhone. Fuck. It's an iPhone, right? Selective outrage. Right. Now you go in there. Now by the by the time you get to. The fact that it's an iPhone, gotcha, bitch. You clicked. You didn't click my shit. Aha. Yeah. Dummy. It was just about an iPhone that someone left on the did desk. Did you? Did you? I mean, is Let that? Let me finish. Oh, go ahead. Please. I'm listening. Cat this tea. Now, we take, we take you, right? And I asked you a question. You balked at it. I'm not sure why, but if I cut it off right, <laughs> if if I cut it off, if I cut it off right there. I don't have to lie. It's not a lie. 
I can do it two ways. I can either ask a question that incites conflict, okay. which is... By the way, is this TMZ 101? Yeah. Okay. Watch. See, and this goes back to the fact that he said we don't have to lie at all. Mm-hmm. All right? We just describe the truth in different ways. Yeah, exactly. And that's good PR, man. You're not lying. You just, you know, you you say what you need to say. You you don't say what you don't need to say. And you infer in other situations. Yeah, you, you can inject things that <laughs> don't matter, pieces of conflicts that don't matter to the story, but also create interest. And we've talked about time and time again, like it's been years now, how you can have one video, change the headline four or five times, 40 times. Mm-hmm and get different outcomes just from a different headline. Yep. And this is what the art form is. Now, we don't have to necessarily go this direction, right? But I, but I think it's very important for people to see this direction. And he's going we're going to play more of this. But it's important to see like how far you can go with it and just the art form of what's happening around you all the time and how they think about it because it's just going to help you better see how can I do this for myself? All right? What is my version of this in this moment? And here, here's a key example where plenty of times we've always said stuff like, um, all right, you might have an artist do something and let's just say, I don't know, Big Dog is the artist's name. Okay. Big Dog. Oh, actually, no, we go back to Chad Focus, right? Chad Focus was the headline. It was like Chad Focus stole $2 million from his job or something like that. Yeah, very salacious. Yeah, that was like, eh. It kind of was salacious. It wasn't salacious enough. You know what's more salacious in that moment? To say rapper. Yeah. Because people care more about a rapper. They don't know who Chad Focus was. Like, that was kind of what I broke down back when that headline, like, first dropping that whole moment dropped. Like, little tweaks like that. If people don't know you, but people have emotions about rappers. People have mm-hmm. expectations and boxes that they have in rappers. And then, of course, maybe you're a singer or EDM artist or whatever, whatever. But like just understanding the impact of those words, which can be true, but incite different emotions, is it is the game. But let's like go back th- to this masterclass. By the way, is this TMZ 101? Yeah. Okay. Watch Bootleg, and there are people much better at it than I was. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I was a lo- in terms of like like writing, headline writing. Yeah, like l- much better, right? Watch bootleg. Watch bootleg. Kev hesitate when asked if he supports Joe Rogan's N-word use. Now you could do it that way. I wouldn't do that because mm. that's leading too much. It's actually not the type of headline I would write. I would write. I would watch. Boot bootleg. Kev. I'll probably put it in quotes. Bootleg Kev on Joe Rogan's N-word use. Well. And I'll put that in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> and I will put that in quotes. I will do like whatever you said. I will like I will like I will put bootleg Kev because this because then I got this is what I want. What I want in the headline number one. My name SEO. I don't want your name. God bless you. No. In whose the name? Do, who, who name? Whose name do I want? Joe Come Rogan's. On. That's the name I yeah, want. True. So I want Joe Rogan's name in the headline. What did we just talk about the D one episode before? Yep. The moment that your name gets mentioned with a celebrity, you're next to a celebrity, you got to go crazy with the PR, the paid PR, to document your name next to that. Now, obviously, this is a a negative situation he wouldn't want out there for him. But when it's positive for you and you are attached to a brand, leverage that headline and that name as much as possible in your paid PR. You want to then pay and tell some PR person, yo, get this story rolling. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So I want Joe. I might even go, I might even do this. I might even put above the headline, I might put Joe Rogan, right? Mm-hmm. And then I might put uh, 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 podcaster Cactus T agrees or, or, or balks uh, or, or, or hesitates when asked if he likes N word usage on Ro- Joe Rogan experience. Boom. We're going everywhere. Now, then, then, this is what I'll do. Then I'll take the clip of Joe Rogan mm-hmm. saying the N-word over and over and over again. <laughs> That's a sub asset in the right. post. That's mm-hmm. at the bottom of the post. Oh, I've re- yeah, this is this sound this sounds yeah, how oh, I see it. Uh this is how you do it. Then as a <laughs> sub asset at the bottom of the post. Mm-hmm. And then I put tags and all throughout there I got hyperlinks. I got I got Rogan's apology in the mm-hmm. post. I got Rogan saying the N-word in the post. I got the whole nine. Yeah. And then I leave off on a question. All right, so the rest of that clip is actually very interesting. We'll put that in the description below. But just for purposes of time and topic, 
we're gonna we're gonna keep it on this right now. The PR masterclass and breaking things down for y'all to use yourself. So, like, first of all, Corey, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I I, I see no lies, man. That's uh, <laughs> that's I, I won't even take it as far to say as that's modern PR. You know what I'm saying? I think that's just modern storytelling in in, in the digital <laughs> age. And which is interesting, right? Like how much tradition, how much traditional PR tactics have just kind of become like the norm mm-hmm. and regular because of social media. Yeah, because of social media. Yeah, it's like so we're all always looking for these quick hit moments, and it's like, what's the best place to borrow? Practice is going to get you that. You know the the PR and the um the tabloid world for real. I mean, we've been mm-hmm. honest, like you know, tabloids have been Instagram since long before we even knew what Instagram was. You know, a lot of the things they do today. Oh, we do today are just rehash techniques that, that some of these journalists have been doing for decades. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. And again, your situation might not be this extreme, but understanding the extremity a lot of times mm-hmm. allows you to better isolate like the actual tactics that are at play. So then you can dial it back for your situation. But when they aren't as extreme as this example, a lot of times it's muggy. Like, what exactly is he doing? It's very clear what he was doing right here, which is why I think it was a perfect example. And, you know, as an artist, especially, all right, of course you're trying to stand out. Of course you want yourself to be seen in the best light possible. But there's two levels of it. There's the posts that you have on your own page and how are you positioning those headlines. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, lo- a lot of freedom when it comes to the messages you're spreading through your personal PR that aren't on your page and how you get talked about. And I don't think artists kind of put that differentiation there enough where they, or maybe a, a lot of artists don't get the opportunity to really use PR for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, shoot, today PR enough is the blogs on IG. Yep. So really they don't I don't maybe they don't think about it in that way. But be very cognizant of the headlines that you're spreading about yourself and you can go really wild. You can go very interesting when it's not on your page. And I've um I because I don't want to say the artist um or anything, but pretty recently for an artist, I definitely put a headline out there for him that he never would have put on his actual page. Mm. Right? But the headline worked. And that's the beauty of, uh, about it, right? Because it only affects your brand to a certain level when it's the thing that you're sharing directly. Mm-hmm. But outside of your page, right, there's a lot of tactics that you can use that you feel like would mess up your brand on your page that grab attention, get the point out there, and then leads back to people following you, et cetera. And I encourage y'all, like a lot of the ideas where you're like, Oh man, I don't want to tell people to do a open, uh, what do they call it? An open verse challenge on my page or do a cover song on my page. You know what you can do? Well, you can just pay a couple of people to start singing cover songs, right? And then maybe shout out a couple of those people on your page, but also just really, more importantly, share that that song is being covered mm-hmm. right, on all these other pages. So people just naturally start to pick up on it. You don't have to say, hey, y'all, you know, I got this new song out. I would love if y'all do covers. I'm going to give $1,000 to the best one. No, nah, it doesn't even have to be a challenge in that way. You just allow people to see the example and then get encouraged by the example and you share that it's happening and that's it. So it's not impacting your brand. You don't have to do anything that feels like isn't you, right? And these PR messages, again, these extremities, you can go a lot harder on them outside your, your page in the same way. Yo, artists, there's a lot of distributors out there, but if you want a distributor that will take you seriously, not just look at you as a number, then Two Loss is the platform from you. I'm talking about helping you beyond just putting your music on all the DSPs. That's what y'all are supposed to do. Two Loss actually helps you with your money. I'm talking about whoever is a part of the song, dealing out the splits easily, or more importantly, helping giving you an advance so you can actually create what you need to, whether that's studio time, whether that's your music video, but helping you get money to help fund your career. And most importantly, a lot of these distributors don't really help with the playlisting and things like that unless you are a signed artist. You have some kind of serious deal, but Two Loss has that ability as well. And some of our clients, when they switched over to Two Loss, they've given us shining reviews. Mm-hmm. So check out Two Loss 
twoloss.com and make sure you put in the code no label. Again, that is no label, N O L A B E L, and let them know that y'all came from us. It's completely free. Make sure y'all let them know where y'all came from. No label. Let's get back to the episode. I think that sometimes is what is overlooked about using other pages is, um, is you allowed to frame the message in a way that maybe you wouldn't normally say or wouldn't make sense when you write. And so I say it because I know it's a pretty popular thing where you'll see a lot of bigger artists who have a platform say like, hey, I'm not going to a Arjun or a Say Cheese or a, 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 a spiritual word or something because I have my own platform. I can control my own messaging. But what they oftentimes don't talk about or the audience may not be aware of is that you – you do have a voice, but the voice is limited to some degree. Like it's mm-hmm. limited to what I already know about you and the framework that's kind of providing me and like what I would expect you to say or do in a certain situation. So like, let's say for example, let's say like me and you start beefing, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just terrible, like oh, it's just nasty fallout. <laughs> if I go on my account and I post something along, let's say my headline says something like, um, you know, I had a falling out with brand man Sean and, and I hate him or something. Mm-hmm. That would be weird coming from me because people are like, damn, like Corey ain't never talked like this on his platform before. Like, you know, that'd be, uh, a, that'd yeah. be a weird thing from the post versus if like, I don't know, let's say fucking, I ain't thinking of the platform that would cover that. Let's say Our Generation Music picked it up and that was their headline. You know what I'm saying? Like now it's different. Like, cause now we know, oh, this context might not necessarily be true. This is just how they're kind of framing it. And what I've been a part of and have seen artists do is use that to their advantage. Like they'll take certain accounts and be like, hey, like I can't say this this way, but you can. So mm-hmm. I'm going to post it like this. And then I want you to pick it up with this messaging on it. And, you know, from the outside looking in, you'll be thinking like, oh, the artist just posted and the, the platform came up with this messaging to get it out there. True. Whole time that was the part of the campaign. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, if we want to use a beef, for example, I can't, like, I might not be able to outright, outright lie about this. Yeah. But I might allude to to somebody being a certain way. Or I might not be able to call you, like, a hoe, for example. Yeah. Right? But I might call you loose. Right? <laughs> but then the headline, say, Sean says that he a hoe. Be, it's like <laughs> something real direct, right? Yeah. So then again, it can't be traced back to me. I could always say, well, hey, I only said this. Yeah, I ain't said right? that. Right? Yeah. I didn't say that. That was them and their assumption. But you put out the but you know that they're gonna want to put out the word that gets the most attention anyway. So you set something up, right? It's like mm-hmm. you you set it up. You throw the alley oop for the PR to be able to dunk it with the the strongest, most salacious headline. Yeah, exactly. And like I think um, you know, it's getting out there more about PR, which is a blessing and a curse. But just how much of these things are it's a curse and a blessing. Curse first. <laughs> <laughs> like how much of these things are staged, or you know, that, that's why I know. Like personally, I'm not so quick to like jump on an artist when I see a negative message about an artist. Yeah. But there's a part of me that sometimes is like, hey man, like this might be this might be the exact intended effect that they wanted. Oh yeah, they wanted me to wake up and be like, "Oh, this shit is terrible." Like, fuck this nigga, whatever. Like, it's like, and I'm not giving them that because I know better. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna scroll right yep. past it. But and it's like, and like you said, like we've been a part of moments, good and bad, that have you know been in the line with that. that they've done saying? what they've done. Yeah, they've done, they've what, done they've what they've done. They've done. And you know, I think that um, I don't know. That was the most exciting revelation for me personally when I got into PR was learning like, hey man, like I have complete control of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and it's, it's a little worse now where it's like, yeah, is it possible that like some platforms that aren't a part of your campaign pick it up and spread a narrative you don't want? Yes, that's, that's, that's the, that's the bigger risk you incur with modern PR that wasn't necessarily like, I mean, it's always been a possibility. Like even like the 90s, it could be like, I was about to write an article and you picked it up and you go with a different angle that gets bigger than my angle. But like, it's just a lot more prevalent now because there are a lot more platforms with voices. Right. But also the flip side is that it is more, it is easier than ever to control a narrative than it's also been. Because for every five pages that you can't get in contact with the post, there are five more that will take your money and post it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're big or it's, or it's, it's, you know, something that is worth them talking about. Like most pages aren't going to turn that down. So like it's easier now than ever than it is to kick off a 
PR campaign, you know. And what about staging PR? That was one of the big moments or points that you made when we were talking earlier. So we talked about the headline yeah. and how you tweak something to make sure you get the most attention, reaction, cut through the noise. But yeah. Yeah. how do you stage something from end to end? Yeah, so I think the, the first thing you have to think about is who is the group of people that I want to um, engage? Who do I want to piss off? Who do I want to make happy? Who do I want to make yell in excitement, right? You have to first I identify the target audience for the, the said message you're trying to get over. Um, I think the second part is then understanding where are the platforms that these people typically get their message and their news from, right? So if, if, if I know I want to speak to a group of sports fans, I can assume that they're probably getting their news through – sports publications and sports outlets and, and sports pages, right? I can work it backwards from there. And so once you kind of identify those two things, now you have to craft a message that you know will emotionally resonate with those people in whatever fashion you're looking for, and then craft the headlines and the, the messaging that you can take to the platforms that those people are paying attention to. And this is the part where it starts to become a science, you know what I'm saying? Because like you can, you know, like I can wake up and say, I want to make people mad. I can have a good idea what I think might make people mad, but I don't know if it's going to actually make people mad until mm -hmm. I, I get it posted. You know what I'm saying? Um, but even like his example, I think is a really good example, right? Because you, you you look at the way Van Lathan um, framed his messaging, and I, I think about the headline as if he was speaking to different groups of people, right? So like the headline he came up with, if we that sounds like a headline, he would probably be running to like black publications to you know what I'm saying to, to yeah. get them inside, right? Because that if if he ran that same headline and put that shit on like the fucking New York Times or something like nothing crickets. Maybe not, maybe not crickets, but it wouldn't be as big of a deal if he had put that shit on the spiritual word. Spiritual word, shit out of here. Right, you know what I'm saying because it's crafted right. in a way that makes sense. I I even thought about that headline. Like in my head, I, I saw three different scenarios. It's like, okay, how would this headline be crafted if Joe Rogan? was controlling the narrative. Joe Rogan would want his name in it because then he could be like, hey, look at this other famous person that's vouching for me. That might be the way it's framed from Joe Rogan's standpoint. Hey, yeah. I'm not a bad guy. Look at all these other people that you might like that agree with me, yeah. right? If it was from his standpoint, like you said, like let's say um, Bootleg Kev was around writing the headline, like you said, he wouldn't, he wouldn't want that in there at all because it's like, okay, I, I don't want anybody to know I'm associated with this. And then if it's from the standpoint of like TMZ, TMZ just going for the biggest headline they can get. They're going to say whatever the fuck they, they got to say to make yeah, it hit. they can. Yeah, so, but you have to think about that, right? It's like, what is my intended message? What is the intended um, emotional response I want from the people? Where are these people paying attention to? And then it's like, okay, how can I craft a message in the right piece of layers, layers being like the content or the assets or whatever that triggers this, this desired um, outcome? And so... A personal experience I have is, um, let me think of one, because I got a couple. I'm trying to think of one that matches this. So the one I can think of off the top of my head is um, the Nathan Faust campaign that I did like a long time ago. So like, you know, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, Nathan Faust is a rapper from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, he was like one of the first artist I ever worked with when I became a marketer. I think he might have actually been like my second client ever. Maybe like my second or third client ever. <laughs> and he has this video that you can find online now where um, he's playing around with the gun. He drops the gun. It goes off. His mom comes in the room and like beats his ass and then like she drags him out the room while the song is playing in the background. And so like I said, that was my first ever like viral campaign I ever worked on. And he stayed, he completely staged that video. Now, Looking back on it, if I think about the conversations we had, at least the ones once once I realized it was staged, there were parts of it where he he did think about it in the way of like, okay, this video is going to piss off a couple groups of people. It's going to piss off people who are looking for family friendly content because there's a gun in this video, so it's not. And this is this is early Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Where you could wave a gun around and not be yeah. you know too much bad happening. So you know what I'm saying? Like here's my family friendly my content that's anti family friendly content, right? It's gonna piss off. Gun enthusiasts, because anybody that knows people that's really into guns, what are they really into? Gun safety, usually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Holding it right. Yeah, holding it right, pointing it, all, all that yeah. shit. So that's a that's another demographic of people that he was going to piss off. Um, the musical message of it at the time um, that I also think played a part into it was the narrative behind it was school shooter of the rap game, right? And we talking about 2016, 2017, so we weren't too far removed 
from some some recent school shootings at the time. You know what I'm saying? And so if you think about all sure these, didn't say that narrative fast. You, you didn't you didn't put enough emphasis. Oh, school shooter of the rap game. That was yeah. That right. was a matter, message. Just to make I, that clear. Yeah, school shooter rap game. Like I said, 2016. I mean, we were maybe like two years removed from the most recent school shooting at that time. You know, so very very bold uh, messaging choice on his part. Yeah. Um. I don't even think it was that long, to be honest. Yeah, it might have been. I'm trying to tell you. I feel like we yeah. were still in the midst of, of stuff. Some, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so it's like bold messaging, but it's like these are the elements that he put together because he could see the group of people in, in his head that it was going to piss off. I, I don't actually now I think about it. I don't even know if he thought about it that deep. I know for a fact when I first saw the campaign, that's how deep I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, I, could, I, was like oh, I can see at least three groups of people in my head that are going to get mad as fuck when they see this video. Let's do it. Tell them, tell them how really got. Just as an example, when you really cut through the noise, what it looks like. Yeah. So um, at first, it was all fun and games. You know, it was pretty funny. People from his hometown were seeing the video, um, and then he started getting death threats. You know, it got mm -hmm. that serious. Like I, I'll never forget this day. I, I will never forget this because this was so funny to me, and it, it's funny to me now because. It showed my lack of experience as a marketer at the time. But I remember us having this conversation one day and we were just talking about next steps for the song. And as we we're talking, he was like, oh shit, I just got a DM from like a really big gun page on Facebook. And the page had like, like 800,000 followers or something. And so they just wrote him like, yo, like, yo, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, what should I say back? I was like, oh, they're probably writing you just to say like, hi, like write him back and say like, hey, like appreciate the support. Can I get my video posted on y'all account? And so he writes it back, like I told him to write back, and they wrote back, they was like, oh, fuck no, like, we hate you, like, we're not posting this fucking video. We actually wrote you to tell you, we think you should fucking die, and we hate this video, and it's terrible, and it needs to come down. And we both was like, oh, shit, we Yo, completely misread the situation. First of all, the... To have that intention, <laughs> but to start with a yo, yeah, exactly. That's bro. wild, bro. You you need to just come and drop that in my DM. Don't don't give me a yo and set me up for <laughs> like start off with the heat, bro. Like start <laughs> off with the energy you want me to pick up on, oh, bro. That's wild. But it was crazy because I was like, oh man, like you know, looking back on it, that wasn't the first page of that type that had given him that type of energy. So we should our guard should have been up at that point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. Like our guard for sure, should. we we should have been like, oh, this is an anomaly that one is reaching out to support mm -hmm. us. You know what I'm saying? But like, but that whole situation was staged. Like I said, it get, I mean, there was a point where, like I said, he was getting death threats. He had the cops show up at his door. Um, it got that serious where the police saw the video online and thought it was a real video, and he had to talk them through how it was fake and pretty much like walk them through the whole setup, <laughs> just the whole staging of the video. He actually has this video that we were, we were going to put out at the time, which was like an audio recording of the police talking to him. But by the time it happened, the momentum was dying down. So I didn't think it would have like added anything to the, the conversation. No, nah, it was. It yeah, no, you're right. That's what I'm saying. But like I said, yeah, inexperienced yeah, as a marketer. Yeah. 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 yeah like, it was so. probably for the best though, to be real. <laughs> and like the, re the marketing <laughs> side says, oh yeah, like that thing should have came out. The reality... I don't know. I think it was best that it did yeah, come out. And yeah, and that is the thing. That's the good point you actually bring up is like what I have learned from that situation um, and what I try to tell artists is that if your idea is as good as you think it is, it's going to have real world implications. Yes. If your idea is not as good as you think it is, it won't. It won't. There will be zero real world implications. You could damn near be walking around this bitch with dragons on your shoulder and nothing is going to happen. But if it's a good idea, you are going to feel that in real life in some way. Like I said, he had death threats. He had people... Walking at him in public, the cop showed up at his door. These are, to your point, albeit fucked up from a personal standpoint, all of those were great signs from a marketing standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely made young Corey be like, no, we gotta keep pushing this shit. This shit gotta keep going. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And like, so, and I think what's even more of a testament is like that video resurfaces like once a year and goes viral once a year. And every mm -hmm. year, there's a new group of people who think the video is real. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that they kind of like fall into the funnel of like learning that it's not real. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, what are we talking now? Six years later. You know, but. Um, we talking about Snoop Dogg posted it. Yeah, Snoop posted it. Drake posted it. Or no, Drake posted it. Tag, no, Snoop posted it. Tag, tag Drake. Drake. D.L. Hughley posted it. Um, Jesus and Mero at the time did a, a segment on their show about it. World Star picked it up. Um, like every damn near, like every major publication of the time picked up that video. And like I said, it was crazy because this is like my second ever marketing campaign. So at the time, like I can speak from this now with a new sense of wisdom. But at the time, this is like the first time it ever happened to me. So I didn't even know what you know. I was making good guesses, but 
if we've been real, like it's some things I could have did better about that campaign. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like if I look back on it, there's at least two or three things I think I would did differently about that situation. But this is the beauty of staging though, right? And I, it's, it goes back to that same idea that I tell artists when it comes to making content, like the more energy you put in before you record, the better. Right, because when you record, you just have the content you have. Oh, to work with, yeah. But he put together an idea mm -hmm. that was gonna hit. Yeah. Right now, again, whether you agree or disagree with the angle that got taken, it got taken. Right. It was. It's a pretty wild angle. We all. I think we all know that. <laughs> and then I think he was. He had this whole thing. Wasn't he like flipping a message where he was actually speaking against? Like, yeah, he was speaking against gun violence. Yeah. But, but uh, if we been, if we been real, nobody made it that far. Yeah, yeah nobody, I, nobody made, made, that far. made it that far <laughs> that you were really speaking against gun violence. Come on. Yeah. But like again, though, like you, you actually put together a concept, executed a concept versus all right, I'm just gonna hop up here and like put my face to the phone or I'm just gonna do another like recording at the mic. And there's nothing wrong with those at all either. You might have those as supplementary, but at least having a couple videos, mm -hmm. right, per song or per campaign that you have conceptually thought of, how can I maximize attention, at least within the audience that I want to. It doesn't have to be viral like this and um in that style, but at least to reach and go viral within the audience that's my audience hey just want to drop this quick mention if you're looking for help in blowing up your music and your career as a whole this year at the beginning of every year we open up to find new artists that we want to work with and continue to grow throughout the year which has resulted in many of the big moments that you hear us talk about so if this time we've opened up where you'll be able to see how we approach things from ground zero digging into your brand identity translating that into content, advertising, and full-blown campaigns that result in streams and real fans. And it's only $1 at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. I'll put a link in the description below. But beyond that process, we actually have ways to speak, get to know you, watch you grow throughout your process. So we can lean in and offer extra advising on how to navigate what you're going through in real time. So if you want some real help without having to sign your life away, Check it out at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. Either way it goes, best of luck to you and your career. Yeah, like I have another more lighthearted example um, that I think falls in it. So you remember that 24K Golden campaign we did with the watermelon? You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, right. So it's the same thing. But yeah. there was a point, I don't, remember, I don't remember what song we were working. It might have been Games on Your Phone, I yeah. think. But at the time, there was this trend where... <laughs> This shit dumb as fuck thinking back on it. But it was a trend on TikTok where um, kids were putting rubber bands around watermelons and seeing how many rubber bands they could put into the watermelon exploded. And so I remember at this point, this was really early when I was working with 24 Guy Golden. And we pitched to him that he do it. Like we was like, bro, you should do this watermelon trend. It hasn't like reached a point yet where like big celebrities are doing it. You could be the first one to embrace it. To your point, Rob, we like, we know your audience is paying attention to this trend. Um, and we knew the narrative weren't gonna be like super great coming off of that. Like it's gonna be people talking about, oh, look at these kids on TikTok doing these dumbass TikTok mm -hmm. things. And we knew that. We was like, bro, you could be the person that rides the narrative of like, oh, look at these kids doing this, this dumbass TikTok stuff. And he did it and it went exactly like that, right? A lot of publications picked it up, like all oh, 24K Golden embraces the watermelon challenge, whatever it was called at the time. Um, he was like the first big, artists at the time to do it so it did bring more attention to the trend as the trend got more attention he got more attention to of it too because people were assuming he was the one that made it as big as it was which he wasn't you know what i'm saying like it was mm -hmm. a full-fledged trend before he hopped on it you know what i'm saying but it's like um ray schremer with a mannequin challenge yep exactly it's like if if i was watching this long enough i know that you didn't do it and you just hopped on it but if i'm someone that's completely new especially at that time not only to TikTok, but the trend in general now, I think that you started it. And every time I see it, I'm going to think about you. Every, if I see articles that purport that you started, I'm just going to believe it because I wasn't mm -hmm. early enough in the journey to see that, no, you were like the 50,000th person that actually did it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, people aren't thinking that far. And so, like, that was something where, like, we caught a good moment. It was like, bro, like, the, it's not like a super strong narrative, like, you know, what Van is talking about, like, the, the, the Nathan one, but it was like a small micro moment that we were able to hop on that gave us like an extra week or two or something to talk about around 24K Golden that, you know, I, I won't say that we wouldn't have had it 
if we didn't do it, but we didn't have to think about it because we figured out something <laughs> to to build on in that time, and it it bridged really well between the other stuff I remember us doing for him at the time. Like it, it bought us another like week or two of public talk. That by the time the next thing came out, he was already like pre- like they was already warm for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I said to say like every moment doesn't have to be like this super serious like you know like oh I'm speaking out against something or standing for something big. Like sometimes it just be little shit like you know and that's the beauty of PR is PR is about telling a story doesn't nobody said the story has to be um you know heart wrenching or 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 deep or anything like that that just needs to be a story that's worth talking about and that could be short story that could be yeah short story it could be good bad insignificant important you know what I'm saying like with the the goal of PR is just to get people talking yep now with that being said we got to touch on just the the point that drives it all together. Like, when do you do a PR campaign? We've kind of talked about this in, mm-hmm. a little bit in a recent episode, but because this is the masterclass episode, let's like let's end it by when do you do a PR campaign? So I think you do a PR campaign either when you have something to talk about, or okay, I'll say this. I won't even say that. You do a PR campaign when you have something to talk about that could potentially be talked about by others. Mm-hmm. Cause those are, for some of y'all that might want to be ahead, those are two completely different things. You can yes. talk about something that is not something I want to talk about and that's not worth the PR moment. If you're gonna talk about something that's something I, like water cooler talk, if you can create water cooler talk, or you mm-hmm. think it could be water cooler talk, yep. it's worth doing a PR moment. Oh, around. look at this. Or did you hear that? Like that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Or I also believe when you are confident enough in yourself to stage something like that, I think it's worth you doing it. You know, so like mm-hmm. um like we, I mean we talked about twenty four K, we talked about Nathan Fouts. Um, you know, we had the episode last year we talked about like the Eam Triplin situation. Mm-hmm. You know, like Eam Triplin yeah. before that rolling loud moment, I would have been like it doesn't make sense for you to do a PR campaign. Like he you know, he he was moving numbers wise, but there was no narrative around him. And then they staged that moment. You know, we we did the video breaking out how it was that video was more likely staged. You know what I'm saying? Like we, you know, we did the deep dive and looked at the details to put it together <laughs> <laughs> over uh, multiple episodes. For those that don't know, um, but that gave him a moment that was worth doing a PR campaign. You know what I'm saying? Like if Eam yep. Triplin had did a PR campaign around his newest single, it wouldn't have hit nearly as much as it did around. You know, for those of you that don't know, like you know, people not showing up to your Rolling Loud set. His, his whole thing was about having a, a dead crowd at, at Rolling Loud. Um, so I look at it like that. Like, is there, do, do you have something coming out that's worth, um, that could potentially be a conversation starter for people? Or do you have an idea that you can put together that could become a conversation starter for people? If the answer to either of those is yes, then to me it makes sense to do a PR campaign. Now, the caveat is, like I said, where the art and the science comes in is truly understanding which conversation pieces are drivers and which ones are just like, you know, like cool for the moment, you know, like going back to the examples we gave, Nathan Fouts PR campaign, in my opinion, was one that was worth scaling and pushing out for as long as we could. The 24 k golden one was like worth like a week max. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't something where like we were about to sit down and convince him to put together this this long drawn out, you know what I'm saying, PR campaign around. We was like, no, this is a quick moment we can cap on. We see the opportunity to cap on it. Let's do it real quick, get it out of the way and keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so I think whenever you can identify those moments or you even see those type of moments coming up, um, you know, because I'll take it back to even the clip example, right? We just hit February. It's Black History Month. The Van Lathan wanted to, but this would be a perfect way to pop some shit off on, on black Instagram and black Twitter for Black History Month. You know what I'm saying? He might, if he was still at TMZ, he might have seen that coming like, yo, Black History Month is next month. Let yeah. me go ahead and start getting my shit together now. So when that shit hit, I can go ahead and hit the ground running. And art is like, if you pay attention to the world and, and your audience and what they're talking about and things around you, you can you can see moments ahead where you can you can plan some of these things. When y'all sometimes see moments hit and it feels suspicious because it hit around a certain holiday or day or or moment. You're not tripping. You're probably right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They, somebody yeah. with a calendar was like, hey, bro, you know, you know <laughs> fucking Martin Luther King Day coming up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we should, you know, violate. Put some shit together. <laughs> exactly. Put some shit together and violate. Oh, <laughs> uh, so unfortunate. So, yeah, man. So, I don't know. That's how I look at it, man. And, like, you know, I'm, I personally am cut from the cloth of PR stunts. Um, 
lot of people don't know, but I got my start in publicity. That was my first ever industry job was working for a publicist. And the publicist I worked for loved doing publicity stunts. Like that was his whole thing. Like he loved fucking with the public. And that's what I learned from. So I I I stand by them ten toes. You know what I'm saying? Like if you can come up with an idea that tricks the public, go for it. To me, to me, that's when you've earned your master cap in marketing. When you can come up with an idea that tricks mass groups of people, you you a one in this. It's wild when it works. Too. <laughs> Those first few times, I mean, it's just like whoa! I can't believe this many people are are moving. But I got I got a campaign. I can't say who it is, but I got a campaign I did recently where the messaging was so big it got back to the artist, and the artist just thought publications were fucking with him. And I was like, no, nah, it was me. I did that. Yeah. Yeah. LA will hire me to do that. I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you. Actually, I'm gonna tell you about a headline I did last week that it was it was some pretty crazy work. It worked worked out real nice. <laughs> um, but with that being said, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean, and I'm Corey, and we out. Peace.